Hey friends, happy new year. I may own 51 stocks, but there are four of these stocks called my core four that are so important and so core to everything that I do. I am so excited about 2023. Happy new year. Because in this new year, I will be so focused around my core four. That being said, I have some strategic thoughts and imperatives outside of my core four that I want to share with all of you as well. I plan to level up my dividend stock investing game in 2023, and I want to share with all of you in the video today exactly how I'm going to do that. Get ready, everyone, for a really exciting dividend stock investing video. Welcome to PPC Ian. This is Dividend Stock Investing for Everyone. All right, everyone. Today is New Year's Day. If you appreciate these videos, I do please kindly ask you to click that like button. It means the world to me. In terms of the roadmap for the video today, I want to go through my core four strategy, but then I want to move on and discuss my other strategic imperatives as it pertains to dividend stock investing for 2023. As you can see on the screen in front of you right now, these are my core four. Starbucks, covers the restaurants and also technology side of things. Johnson & Johnson covers the uh, healthcare side of things, in particular, the pharmaceuticals and medical devices. Uh, PepsiCo covers the consumer packaged goods, CPG side of things. McDonald's rounds it all out as it pertains to restaurants and more importantly, to real estate. Sometimes I get questions from subscribers asking, Ian, hypothetically, if you were starting over again, say with $10,000 right now in 2023, what would you do? Well, it's hard to say for certain, but if I were starting out again, probably what I would do is take my 10,000 and hypothetically split it four ways into the core four. But I want to share on the screen in front of you right now a little bit about each of these stocks and why I'm so excited about them right now. First and foremost, these are sleep well at night stocks. These are the types of blue chip dividend companies that I can hold for decades upon decades on end and achieve great total returns, especially great dividends and dividend growth. And in particular, I'm excited about these stocks right now because Starbucks PE ratio, as I highlight, has come down to about a 24.62 on a forward basis. I have not seen any kind of EPS estimates, earnings per share, as high as $4 for Starbucks bucks for quite some time. The company is growing and I think they're going to hit the ball out of the park for um, Q4. I, I think it's just going to be phenomenal based on what I've seen in the real world in the market myself as I've gone to my local Starbucks. I love also that Starbucks is growing so quickly that on average for each of the last five years, they've been able to grow the dividend by 12.1%. I only have to compound that for so long for really meaningful results. I love Johnson & Johnson because of the stability that it provides me. It's only down 5.4% from its 52-week high, yet it still is offering some value with those forward PEs in the 17s and it has a great starting yield of 2.6% with a low enough payout ratio at 45% that it can afford to grow the dividend perhaps even faster than it has. I wish it were in the 7% range. Now, I will tell you, as I've gone through 2022, I've learned a lot about myself as an investor. And one thing I learned is that I'm a more conservative investor. I don't like a lot of volatility. I like to sleep well at night and I place a real premium on quality. And so that's what informs this core four strategy for me going into 2023 here. Why I'm so focused on these stocks because I learned a lot about myself as an investor over the last few years, in particular in 2022. And I realized I don't need so much noise in my portfolio. I'm fine placing the biggest bets on my best ideas, which also happen to be the most stable and highest quality ideas. As you can see on the portfolio on the screen in front of you right now with uh, PepsiCo, I love it like J&J &J, that it's performing so well during these turbulent times. It's only down 3.3%. Now, of course, I'm adding more, so I wish it were down more. That being said, as someone who already has a really large position, it's nice to have a minimum of volatility even during trying times. I like that PepsiCo's uh, PE, it's coming down a little bit. I don't highlight it, but finally it's starting to 
kind of tread down just a little bit. And I like the dividend yield starting at 2.5%, the second highest on this list. I love the five-year dividend growth rate on average of 7.4% per year. Last on McDonald's, same story as J&J and Pepsi. It's weathering the storm really well. I think it will continue to. These are the types of stocks that perform well in any economic environment because consumers always want these um, types of products. And in the case of Johnson & Johnson, there's really no... Um, kind of question around it. They, they need it. Uh, these are products that the consumer cannot go without. They're related to the, the consumer's health. And as it pertains to Starbucks, it's a simple luxury uh, that no one is going to give up. Uh, in my humble opinion, I think it's the modern day uh, sin stock, if you will, in some ways, and that it's a simple pleasure. Maybe it's not always the best to have those uh, treats, but you know, we, we as a society can't go without it. PepsiCo, we all need to eat. McDonald's, we all uh, need to eat. And we uh, certainly... The real estate portfolio there has quite a bit of value. But I love McDonald's at the end of the day also how it's growing the dividend on average for each of the last five years by 8.5%. Some of the time uh, investors say, hey, these boring companies that make a lot of money, these kind of old school companies, they're not really exciting. They're not growing anymore. But the numbers that I have on these companies uh, all suggest that they're growing just fine. And they're all growing earnings uh, at a quick enough clip to support these uh, rapid dividend growth rates, which is so important for me because quite frankly, this is a really important point. Everyone's going to have a different investing strategy for 2023. But for me personally, I'm not thinking, oh, hey, come back in a year, everyone, and critique my video. No, I'm thinking, what can I do in 2023 so that by the end of um, 2053, 2063, my portfolio can be on amazing solid footing. And so I'm not looking about like, hey, what's the best performing stock for the next year? No, I'm trying to set myself up for success for future decades. That's why I'm worried about my core four this year, even though they are at higher prices right now. But certainly as I buy these stocks, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm buying at the best possible entry points. But I want to share an analysis with all of you really quickly. There's a lot of numbers you're going to see on the screen, but it just quickly highlights, um, I don't need to even go through all of them. It highlights what I'm trying to accomplish in terms of the core four. And in particular, the strategic imperative for me is this. What's going to happen is everything is going to be smaller than Starbucks, especially when J&J &J spins off their consumer division. Right now, J&J, &J, it's a similar size in the portfolio to Starbucks. Starbucks. Sometimes it's larger, sometimes it's smaller. A lot of the time recently it's been smaller because Starbucks has kind of gone up. The portfolio I'm about to share, it is from November 1st, so it's going to portray um, Starbucks a little smaller than J&J. &J. It's fine. For, for purposes of illustration, this is the most recent portfolio that I shared on Corner Patreon. I know Corner Patrons uh, hang in there. I will be sharing another one um, in the coming weeks. I'm excited to do another portfolio refresh. Uh, thank you for hanging in there. Um, but you're going to see what's going to happen when J&J uh, &J spins off their consumer division. I'm going to have a big position in Starbucks and then J&J, &J, Pepsi, McDonald's, they're all smaller. But I want my core four to all be on parity. I want them all to be similar sizes. That's what my analysis is about. And honestly, I knew this would happen when I put so much money into Starbucks in 2022 because I knew it would grow as well. But it's kind of a game. This is another takeaway. I like to make investing a game. And now I have to play the game of catch up between the these uh, three stocks in the core four and getting them up to size with Starbucks. That's what I want to show you. That's the game I'm playing in 2023. As you can see in front of you right now, the first slide, it just shows kind of the state of events right now with the core four um, as of November 1st. Again, this is a little outdated. Right now, Starbucks is bigger than J&J, &J, but for purposes of illustration, this is just fine. It shows you even without J&J &J spinning off their consumer division, um, it's, it's big, um, it's up there with Starbucks, but Pepsi and McDonald's, they have to grow quite a bit to reach parity at that number one position. And in an ideal world, I want all four of these to be similar size, up in that mid 8% range. Worth noting, all of the core four right now represent just under 30% of my portfolio and around 23.37% of current dividend income. Here's what's important. I wanna talk about post J&J &J consumer division spinoff. What's going to happen when J&J &J spins off their consumer division in the second table at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see J&J &J shrinks. It's going to shrink by 1.91%. I can get to it in a minute how I arrived at this number, but basically um, that's what's going to happen. Now I've got Starbucks up at 8.61%, but the value percentage of J&J, &J, Pepsi, and McDonald's 
are way lower. J&J is at 6.77. Pepsi is at 6.57. McDonald's at 5.75. From a strategic portfolio allocation standpoint, I don't feel good about this. I kind of knew I was going to get into this position when I made Starbucks so big. And I like to sometimes as an investor to strategically put myself in positions I don't feel good about because it forces me to now put a lot of capital into the three stocks that are going to be um, falling behind Starbucks. And that's exactly what I need to do to up level and get my portfolio to the next level. So as you can see on the screen, just one more thing I want to highlight in the second table at the bottom of the screen is to get parity after J&J spins off their consumer division, I'm going to have to add 28% more money to J&J. I'm going to have to add 32% more money to Pepsi. I'm going to have to add 51% more money to McDonald's. I have a lot of money to add. Again, I put myself in an uncomfortable position on purpose to force myself to build up this portfolio. And the quicker I can build it up, the sacrifices I can make now, the harder I can work now, it's only going to put me on a better footing in future years. And right now I'm in my early 40s. I need to do this now because I don't want to be doing this forever. So I'm going to hustle this year. I'm going to work my hardest um, to do that. Now, what's funny is the second table that you see on the screen right now, these grow for parity at number one percentages. This is assuming Starbucks isn't a moving target. If Starbucks is accelerating and growing in value even more, it will be even harder to reach parity. And I knew this could happen. I'm fine with it. But, um, you know, it's a funny turn of events. What I want to do next is I want to share some statistics from J&J &J really quickly to share with all of you how I arrived at the numbers on the prior screen. And then I'm going to round up this section before I get into the next section of my other strategic imperatives this year. If you're enjoying the video so far, drop a comment below. What's your, uh, what are your thoughts about my core four? And what are your thoughts as it pertains to 2023? Do you have any particular investing goals? These are just my goals. I'm just sharing my personal journey for fun and entertainment. But as you can see in front of you right now, I looked at the Q three earnings for J&J. &J, and I just wanted to look at the different divisions. I have consumer health, pharmaceutical, med tech. You can see the sales there on the screen in front of you. And you can see on an adjusted operational, I guess they're all growing, but consumers growing a little slower. Um, that being said, I think when consumers spun off, it's going to carry a higher multiple than the rest of it. And as long as they don't shoulder it with too much debt. Um, the reason is consumer is just a more predictable business. We all know from the pharmaceutical stocks, uh, at least I know from the ones I've analyzed, they all carry lower PEs. So long story short, though, I take these numbers, I take these numbers that you just saw, and I put them into another table, as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, at the bottom of the screen, I take those numbers on revenue, and I just look at percentages of revenue, and I look at consumer, is it 16, pharma, 56, I get med tech at 29, uh, thereabouts, uh, these are rounded numbers. Now, where is consumer health represents about 16% of J&J's sales, I would say of market cap value, I'm just estimating broadly 22%. And the reason I come up with 22% is I believe that that part of the business carries a higher uh, earnings multiple than the rest of the business. Long story short, I'm just ballparking here, but I am planning for a probable case. And so... And again, this, it could be anywhere. That consumer spinoff could be valued of maybe 15, 16% uh, of the total market cap. It may be way up at 30%. I don't know. I'm picking 22%. Long story short, though, that's how I got on the prior slide the um, breakout for the J&J &J consumer at 1.91%. And you can actually see in the top table here as well, that J&J &J consumer division, it breaks out. It's worth 1.91%. That otherwise would have been part of J&J &J um, up in the core four, but now it's broken out at position number 20. I probably won't be adding that uh, to that too much, um, but we shall see if it's a value, maybe I will. But what it does is it reduces the size of my core four. Um, anyway, what you see on the top uh, screen here for me actually is just the, the goal state. If I do my job in 2023 and I, I hustle, I work hard. I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you here. You can pause the screen, kind of look through these later. Um, I, the purpose of this video isn't just to go through analysis paralysis, but it's to, to share with you very quickly how I arrive at my goals, but not only the goals, but what I need to do to achieve those goals. At the end of the year, if I do my job, I would say my portfolio will look like this. Starbucks will be 8.61. J&J &J will be 8.5% of value. After the spinoff, Pepsi will be about 8.25%. McDonald's at 8. And 
Surely I would still have room, as you can see in the final column at the top, to grow to parity with number one, but this is parity enough for me. I can have them stacked this way. I would feel really, really good about that. And what that tells me is this year, I don't have any like windfall events on the horizon. I don't really know how I'm going to accomplish this goal, but I'm putting it out there right now here on YouTube and I'm putting it just there in writing on my computer so that somehow, some way, I will find a way to accomplish this goal more or less this year because I know that's what will set me up for success and will tidy up the portfolio and will future-proof the portfolio, level up the portfolio for the future. But I don't, I, I know what I'm trying to achieve. I know what the goal state looks like. How I will come up with the kind of money that I need to make that happen, that's a whole nother question, but I have a whole year to figure that out. Let's keep going though. As you can see on the screen, I wanna go into segment two of the video today. This is a summary of all of my strategic imperatives this year. I already went through the first one, core four. I wanna now though go on to my second strategic imperative. And the second strategic imperative is in um, the, the, the first part of this year, I wanna deploy, you know, throughout this year, I'm gonna deploy 100% of new capital I have to deploy. 70% of that's gonna to go to core four. But 15% in the first part of this year, at least, I wanna put it into some higher yielders in the portfolio. And I've already discussed those higher yielders at great length in recent videos. Actually, I will link in the pinned comment below so you can check out those. I will link in there to my Patreon as well in case you wanna check that out. Lots of cool stuff um, over there on Patreon as well, including on Corner Patreon, my complete dividend uh, stock portfolio with the percentage allocation to each position. But anyway, I went through all these stocks recently. You can see them on the screen right here. Here's 10 of them. There's another one, Unilever as well, which I recently added to. My patrons already know that. Um, I recently added to Altria as well. My patrons know that. Um, but you can see here, these are some of the higher yielders in my portfolio. People are going to look at this and say, hey, Ian, other than Altria uh, and maybe Universal, maybe uh, 3M, maybe Legit, these aren't really high yielders. I know, I know. For me, though, in the scheme of what I do with core quality, blue chip, dividend, sleep well at night investing, that's just who I am. That's what I've learned about myself. These are higher yielders for me. And so I was inspired recently by the video interviews with Greg. Um, I'm doing high yield in my own way. And I am going to, for part of 2023, as I have already started in 2022, um, I'm going to focus on some of these higher yielders. Why am I doing that? I'm going to boost some of the yield in my portfolio right now because it is exciting to do so. It's nice to see that yield coming through and I can even start using some of it on my ancillary positions as I already am right now to pay some bills. Uh, but on that note, check it out on the screen in front of you right now. One of the big things I did in 2022 is I started buying bonds. I've done some videos on that. I can link to them in the pinned comment. Um, I bought the I-bond because the interest rates were high and they're still pretty high, but I also bought some treasuries as well. For 15% of my focus in 2023, I wanna continue that um, of net new capital deployed. And I like bonds for a multitude of reasons. I like bonds right now because the interest rates are still high. I like bonds because I can use the interest right now to pay bills, whereas I don't feel as comfortable doing that from dividends. I want them to compound further. I'm already using my bond interest to pay bills. I like bonds because I have staggering maturity dates, and when they mature, I can either reinvest them in bonds or I can use the money for dividend stocks. I like bonds as well because they dampen the, por the portfolio's volatility. My portfolio is less volatile because of the bonds because I hold them through maturity. Um, I like bonds as well because they provide a stop gap measure in my retirement, should my um, dividend income fall a little short, or should I just want it to compound without tapping into dividends longer, I can use the raw dollars as the bonds mature just to pay living expenses. And so I want to continue that, not for too big of a focus, but for 15% of new capital deployed. That's part of my imperative for 2023. But let's keep going. As you can see on the screen, the next one is SEP IRA. SEP IRA is actually something I started in 2022. I'm a small business owner. I'm self-employed. I... Um, started a SEP IRA. It's a retirement account that is tax advantaged. Basically, the uh, money goes in there pre-tax from the um, employer, actually. And then when the employee takes it out in retirement, uh, basically, it gets taxed at that time as ordinary income, but it can grow all those years tax-free. Um, it can compound tax-free. 
Of course, uh, contact your licensed tax advisor. I'm not offering tax advice. I'm just sharing my personal journey here um, on YouTube. But um, it's kind of a barbell approach, I guess, I took with retirement accounts. In my early days, I did retirement accounts for a lot of years. I had uh, no more contributions to retirement accounts. In 2022, I started doing retirement accounts again. This is very similar to my strategy in treasuries. I look at these as a stopgap measure. When I do retire, I want to pull money out of the retirement accounts and spend that money so that the dividend portfolio, the core dividend portfolio, my core four especially, can continue to compound for even more years. Now, I also am using SEP IRA to reduce taxable income right now in these years where I have a lot of ordinary income because I'm working really hard. And so... Um, I like that. I like that approach. And it's something that I started doing. Now, how am I investing that money? It's in a balanced mutual fund. I've shared some of this over on Patreon, um, but uh, you can uh, learn more about it over there. Now, I want to keep going. I'm almost done. As you can see on the screen in front of you right now, um, you can see just one more footnote, actually, before I go to number five. With SEP IRA, I'm not really looking that, at that as a percentage of my focus or net new capital. That's just happening. That's part of payroll. That's just, that's just table stakes. It's just kind of, it's, it's going. Uh, that's why I don't include like a percentage of focus as I do with the first three goals. I'm just going to uh, max it out as, as much as I can, like I did in 2022. Now, in uh, point number five, it's not really exciting, but um, actually I find it kind of exciting, but I'm refining my cash management strategy. I have a cash management strategy. It's important for me never to sell dividend stocks. And as someone who's responsible for a uh, family and a uh, family man, husband, father, I have to have cash set aside just in case something happens. And um, of course, in that case, I don't want to tap into dividend stocks. I just don't. So I have cash um, reserves, both uh, short-term and intermediate. Because interest rates are higher, I'm doing stuff with those cash reserves these days. I've shared some of that over on Patreon. One of the strategies... Um, is with CDs. I'm doing some stuff with bonds too, which I just shared on Corner Patreon. But with the CDs, I actually just uh, got into a 3% uh, CD and a 4% CD as well. And I'm going to refine that strategy uh, this year. I'm not going to put too much more money towards emergency intermediate term savings, but I'm going to really focus on getting the most return I can on that idle cash because every dollar helps. And it's so exciting because once, say, retirement happens, again, even those cash reserves can be a means of paying for stuff to delay tapping in to the dividends. And the more I can delay tapping into dividends, even once I've reached retirement, the more that snowball can build. That's it. That's my strategy. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2023. I'm so excited. Share in the comments below what you're focused on this year. I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Please don't forget to click the like button. Also, everyone, don't forget to subscribe. I have new videos on the way all the time. Before I go today, in terms of a full disclosure, I'm long the stocks mentioned today. I'm long Starbucks, SBUX, Johnson & Johnson, j and I'm long PepsiCo, PEP, um, also McDonald's, MCD. I'm long uh, Danone as well, D-A-N-O-Y, Unilever, U-L. I just bought some. Also, I'm long all the 10 other higher yielders in my portfolio that I mentioned. I am long Kimberly Clark, KMB, Clorox, CLX. I am long... Altria, MO, Universal, uh, UVV. I'm long Bank of Montreal, BMO. I am also long Pfizer, PFE, Leggett, and Platt, LEG, 3M, MMM, Southern, SO, Duke, DUK. I own all of them in my personal dividend stock portfolio. I'm also long I bonds, treasury bonds, all kinds of bonds. Um, before I go in terms of a friendly disclaimer, today's video, it's not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video, it's just for your fun and entertainment. If you're going to go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult your licensed financial advisor first. I'm just sharing my journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. It's possible to lose money in the stock market. The strategy I'm sharing here, it's just for my personal situation, for my personal level of risk tolerance. I love you all. I'm going to see you in the comments below. Happy 2023. And I wish you all an amazing, prosperous, fruitful, exciting, financially fun 2023. Mm -hmm.